All right, thanks for coming. It's a very big room. <laughs> uh, but the topic is going to be uh, around the server management. Uh, so it is part of the Server Ready program. How many of you are familiar with the Server Ready program? Uh, about half of you. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to review what the Server Ready program is uh, just a little bit before we jump to the, uh, the server management part. Oh, this clicker, oops, okay. So uh, in this talk, uh, we have two parts. One, one is the specification part, which is the server-based management guide, the work we are doing. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the open source uh, relevance, uh, where, where there's an open source uh, open BMC project uh, out there in the, uh, in the uh, Linux Foundation and how we play into uh, that work. So uh, just uh, kind of a review, uh, why do we do a standard approach for, uh, for the servers? Uh, basically, ARM architecture is good in the sense that it, it supports a very diverse variety of devices. And, and so you know, diversity, diversity is very good. Uh, it, it, it's a differentiation from the other architectures out there. Uh, but uncontrolled diversity is, is uh, very bad, particularly for the server market, uh, because uh, server market is uh, you know, very different from the embedded space, uh, you know, where you support standard operating systems, and the operating systems are owned by a company or many companies that are different from the device manufacturers. So you have to have the kind of the expectation from the, uh, the customers where the installation of the OSs would be very smooth. Um, so, so the installation has to be uh, very, uh, very smooth and just work, right? To the degree where I think earlier today you, you heard uh, uh, David ref referencing uh, John Master's talk about you know, making the servers boring. And so you know, the installation really has to be boring enough to, uh, to get a good experience. And the other learnings that, that we had was uh, it is impossible for the operating systems to be modified for your hardware. And this is a learning that, that is kind of counter to your in, intuitive, right? Because uh, you know, as a hardware vendor, as, as people producing hardware, normally uh, you, know, you, you just ask the firmware or the, the software guys to, to change the software for you. Uh, but in this setup, it's very difficult to do. And, whatever is done in the operating systems, uh, they tend to just want to work on your hardware without a lot of the modifications. Uh, so, so they can't really uh, modify the OS to suit each, you know, each individual hardware. And you know, PCI Express is one very good example for that. Um, and then, uh, you know, because all the servers are actually managed uh, remotely, it, you know, you're not going to go into the data centers to manage individual servers separately. So server management is actually very important. And because we have this diversity uh, that we offer you know, in, in the ARM ecosystem, uh, not having a standard approach to server management is also going to be challenging for the, uh, for the customers, for the users. Um, so servers rely on standards to solve this. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, you know, what kind of standards we're going to be looking at uh, for the uh, server management. And we take the collaborative uh, approach. ARM is not going to define everything uh, just by ourselves. We work with all the silicon providers, uh, you know, ODMs, OEMs, uh, operating system vendors, cloud vendors, everywhere, right? So we have established the server advisory committee, which is now uh, over 43 companies. And we create these standards where, wherever we have to create for the ARM uh, architecture. But we also leverage the industry standards as much as possible by you know, not reinventing the wheels for everything. And then we participate in the open source uh, projects. Uh, you know, that's how we are related to this Lenaro community. And we want to use the open source uh, implementations as a reference uh, you know, in, in the actual deployment of the solutions, you know, the vendors can certainly choose between open source uh, and uh, the uh, commercial solutions. But 
we want to have the, the uh, uh, you know, open source as a reference. Um, so we have been doing this for, uh, for a long time. Uh, we created this uh, advisory committee uh, in 2011. And uh, we have been focusing on the hardware and firmware interfaces in the past. And, and we launched the server-ready program last October, officially, uh, publicly, right? And we have uh, the, the uh, mailing list and, and bug tracking systems where you can, everyone can uh, submit uh, engineering ch change requests to the specs. So, uh, so what we have been doing uh, in the past, we're focusing on uh, the hardware side, the minimum hardware that everybody has to you know, uh, follow for the server market. And then we, we leverage the industry standards as much as possible, and at the same time, we define the ARM-specific uh, you know, uh, hardware like the interrupt controller or the SMMU to fill in the gap, right? Because the industry standards is, is supposed to be there to support you know, multiple architectures, but for some pieces of the hardware, we have to have uh, ARM extensions. And in addition to the hardware, uh, we also support the, uh, the minimum uh, firmware. Uh, so, so in that case, we follow the, the uh, UEFI specifications, ACPI, and then SMBIOS from the DMTF forum. And then we look at the security side as well from the TCG. Right? Of course, you know, PCI is an important technology, so we follow the, the firmware spec there. But there are also gaps that we have to fill, uh, mostly in the ACPI sense, because ACPI was created for the x86 industry uh, before. And so, so then we have to fill in the gap where you know, how, how we describe certain uh, you know, hardware, certain functionalities, we have to create you know, those kind of tables or namespace for, for ARM as well. So, so we, we created a few ARM specifications to, uh, to fill in the gaps. So those are the things that we have done in the past. And, and you know, if you're familiar with the server-ready program, uh, you, you probably are already aware of that. Uh, in addition to the specifications, we also created uh, this compliance test suite called ACS, Architecture Compliance Suite. And uh, basically what, what we have done is we created test cases to check the, uh, the hardware requirements and firmware requirements that are specified in the SBSA and SPBR documents. And uh, after last October, we were able to actually get everything in the open source for this compliance uh, suite. So we, we are uh, basing our designs on the test engines that were developed for uh, the UEFI tests and the ACPI tests. So, so there was a, a self-certifying test suite that was built by the UEFI forum, which used to not be uh, open source, but I made it open source last October. And then uh, Canonical also contributed the test engine for uh, the runtime uh, firmware service checks, uh, the F FWTS. And then we created test cases to, uh, to test on uh, ACPI compliance as well. Um, so the, everything is open source, uh, so which, which is actually very nice. Um, in, in this package, you know, if you see any problems, uh, you know, you can check to see if, if your hardware is, of, uh, you know, is having issues or if, if the test cases are not done correctly. And then you can submit the changes, uh, you know, when, when you figure out how to, how to do that. So, uh, so, so now I'm going to transition to uh, the talk about the server management. So in the spirit of covering the kind of the, the standardization of, of these features, uh, so we are going to be following the same kind of practices. In addition to the SBSA and SBBR, we are creating this thing called uh, SBMG, the Server-Based Manageability Guide. And uh, as, as you may be aware, in the x86 world at least, uh, you know, there, there has been this implementation of IPMI, the, the, uh, the, the standard that was, uh, you know, the intelligent platform management uh, interface, right? That was created in the 90s. And uh, the technology was actually pretty uh, old, right? Legacy, 20 years um, or more already. Um, 
And there are, there are a number of issues there as well. You know, the, the bandwidth, uh, you know, the, the interconnect between the SOCs and, and BMC and, and all these uh, connections are uh, based on low pin counts or uh, I, I square C buses. Um, so, uh, and there are also security issues related as well, uh, bandwidth issues. But the interesting thing is a lot of the users, including the cloud providers, are currently relying upon this technology to do a lot of server management. So, so we are not able to completely uh, you know, stop supporting that feature and, and move on to a, a, a new uh, interface design yet. So, so we have to consider IPMI uh, in, in the server management. Some of the OS installation, you know, remote installation and, and such, are also based on some of the IPMI commands. Uh, the, one of the IPMI drawback is also the, uh, the, uh, the standardization of the, the actual commands that they support. In the design in the 90s, uh, there's this very small set of commands that are standardized. A large number of commands are actually OEM-based. So every OEM, HP, Dell, or Lenovo, or whatever, uh, every one of them created their own set of commands to do a lot of management tasks. As you can imagine, this might be good if your entire data center is filled in with HP gear, right? But, uh, but if, if the customers want to have uh, you know, diversities in the kind of servers that they, they procure from different vendors, then you know, if, if most of the commands are OEM specific, then it's going to be a, a bit of a trouble. So we're going to look into the, the kind of the minimum set of standards that we need to support uh, in the server management. And we look at a lot of aspects, the, the SOC to BMC connections, the SOC to IO devices connections, and, and you know, all these sensors in the, in the uh, system. And, and there's also a new industry standard that, well, it's not really new, but it's, it's taking time to actually move into the data center which is called the Redfish. Redfish is based on the RESTful API, and the RESTful API is being used by uh, most of the server management users, um, you know, because it, it's web-friendly, right? You can do a lot of things. People managing the servers are also those uh, DevOps who are very familiar with that environment. So Redfish is developed to accommodate that kind of a, a usage model. And so how, how are we going to uh, develop this SBMG? So it's the same uh, as, as the SBSA and SBBR development. We discuss the areas that we want to standardize you know, in this specification in the server advisory committee community that I talked about already, right? We have the mailing list, we have the uh, engineering change request database and everything uh, that we have established for these other uh, specifications as well. And the, uh, the tracking, you know, we track the spec changes by using the engineering change request, and there's this Mantis database that we leverage from, uh, you know, the open source uh, as well, right? A lot of the other industry standard bodies are using this kind of uh, procedures also. It, it's a very nice way of making sure whatever you have discussed are not falling through the tracks because you have a, a, a ticket in the system until it's resolved either you, you withdraw or you get the community to support you uh, to, to effect the changes in the spec, you know, the thing is going to stay there, right? So, so this is a very nice uh, system to, to, uh, to use. And we have a monthly meeting uh, every, every uh, uh, fourth Friday of the month to talk about uh, these engineering trends requests. But because this SBM, SBMG spec is new, there's, there's, there's a lot of discussion happening, right? So, so we have actually created a, a number of uh, sub-teams um, because there are a, a number of areas that we have to focus on. And the uh, development process is exactly the same as how we did the SBSA and SBBR development. There are two ways of uh, the community working with the uh, advisory committee. Either you can you know, sign on to that database and mailing list and submit the change request uh, on your own, 
or if you don't feel comfortable about submitting uh, publicly, that you can you know, privately work with us, with ARM, to help you submit the change request. Most often, I think people feel fine to submit publicly. Uh, there are a few cases where you know, maybe the, the vendors are not willing to disclose some of the, the perspectives that they work with us privately. So either way, it's fine. So we support both. And we, we go, the, you know, go through these discussions in the sub-teams, and then we go through the discussions at the you know, monthly meeting. Once they are approved by the community, we put it into the spec. And so why are we doing this SBMG? Like I said, the server management is a very critical uh, function of the servers. Uh, it, it may be counterintuitive, but you know, because when you deploy all these thousands of um, or tens of thousands or millions of servers in the data center, you don't go into the, uh, um, you know, the data center to manage individual systems. So, so typically, the server management including, uh, includes this, the functionalities of monitoring the sensors in the, in the platform, remote firmware management, uh, update, remote debug, remote server provisioning to install the OSs, and of course, also the REST support, right? When error happens, what do you do? So typically, it involves subsystems with BMC, and BMC and RMC, the rack, mon uh, rack module uh, management controller is also used in, in the inter-chassis management as, as well. And it's interesting, most of these ma management controllers are ARM-based, so uh, so it's also important that we get this thing right for the ARM community as well. So what is in there? So like I mentioned, it includes all the uh, interfaces between the different entities, right? The SOC, the BMC, the sensors, the IO devices. And we have to figure out what the right interfaces for the hardware uh, whether it's the physical media or the abstracted uh, protocols, we have to look into uh, those areas. And like I mentioned, IPMI is still important. We have to uh, work on the min minimum requirements there. Uh, at the same time, we have to look at Redfish, uh, you know, and also the PMCI, the, the platform management interface support as well, and remote debug, platform monitoring, and RAS are the three areas that we are currently looking into. Firmware update is something that we also need to look into later on uh, when, we, uh, when we address all these uh, areas. So here's a kind of a summary of what the remote debug sub-team is doing. Uh, so, so basically, the remote debug is going to uh, go through the BMC for the servers. It's not the, you know, the connection is not going to go directly to the SOC, but it has to be connected through the BMC to, uh, to be the endpoint for the network connection. And so we're going to define the protocols, the, the physical interfaces, uh, and, and also the mechanisms to in ensure that the debuggers are working fine in that environment. And then the Platform monitoring sub-team sub is working on you know, the in interfaces and protocols needed for all these communications. Uh, because I, I mentioned there are different kind of sensors. Uh, you know, the data need to come to BMC, and the BMC also need to be able to control uh, you know, some of the, the functionalities like you know, system reset or you know, the temperature and power control. And then also the RAS sub-team is defining the, the, the BMC manageability interfaces. And it's, it's not, you know, I think when, when you're dealing with the, uh, the error handling situations, uh, we have a lot of interfaces defined between the OS and the firmware on the SOC front, on the host front. But we also have to cover the BMC side because uh, when, when the, uh, you know, system admin actually deals with the errors, uh, they would be interacting with the BMC. So the error records and how you uh, manage, manage the system, you, you have to go through the BMC. So we are going to look at the interfaces and mechanisms to do that through BMC. So here's a kind of a chart. It's, it's a bit hard to see, but you know, when you get the slides, you can, you can 
you can see the differences. The blue colored ones are what I mentioned as the interaction between the OS, the host side, to the SOC. You know, how you do the error handling, error injection, uh, you know, those kind of uh, behavior. And there's a session after this actually talking more about this, the RAS. But then on the other side, you have to have the interfaces defined to, to move all these information through the BMC to the server uh, you know, system admin. So, so a lot of the, the interfaces are, are still to be defined, and that sub-team is looking at you know, these red-colored col areas. It's kind of a, a mirror image of what we have defined in the case of the OS host side handling, uh, the error injection, error, hand, uh, error interrupt, right? error, error uh, handling. Um, and the same would have to be available on the BMC front. And I think I have already covered this, I, IPMI versus Redfish. Uh, the cloud vendors are still relying on IPMI for uh, some degrees today. You can't uh, move away from IPMI overnight. Uh, and Redfish is starting to appear on, on some of the recent uh, uh, servers, and, and especially the northbound API, the northbound meaning the, the interfaces toward the, the system admin. And, and then, you know, a lot of the important features like the BIOS to BMC inter, uh, communications, error reporting, uh, the KVM, though this is not the virtualized, uh, virtualization part. The KVM means uh, keyboard, video, and mouse in this case. Uh, and, and also SOL, those kind of features are still very important to the, uh, to the uh, cloud providers. And the transition to Redfish is going to take some time. And, and it's usually would, it will happen until all the servers are going to be able to, uh, to support Redfish, right? So this is going to take, take several years, I think, because you know, the data centers retire those servers you know, every two or three years. And so you know, until all the new servers are going to support Redfish, uh, they cannot uh, move overnight. So as, as it relates to uh, the Lenaro community, uh, the OpenBMC is what I think going to be the reference implementation for the, uh, the SBMG. And so OpenBMC defines a standard BMC firmware stack, and it's uh, an uh, open source project hosted by uh, Linux Foundation. Uh, there's a biannual release every February and August. Uh, they, they, there's going to be a release. And uh, uh, the, the 2.6 release that they had uh, already started to support features like the web UI, the SOL, IPMI 2.0, some partial support for Redfish. And then OpenBMC 2.7, which is going to happen in August, uh, is going to look into the MCTP PLDM support for PMCI, uh, which is a protocol abstraction that can be supported on a number of buses like I square C or uh, SM bus or uh, PCI uh, VDM. And then a Redfish support is going to also happen in 2.7 uh, with you know, the support of firmware uh, update, power control, thermal control, and, and uh, the virtual media, the KVM that I talked about, uh, including the, the virtualized uh, uh, storage. And this is, you know, OpenBMC is Yocto-based, and it's, it's based on Linux. So, uh, you know, the, the chip is actually some sort of, a, uh, you know, A-class uh, ARM chip, you know, A9 or uh, whatever the vendors choose. And I mentioned there's also a project called OpenRMC uh, hosted in the uh, OCP, the Open Compute Project. This is dealing with the rack management controller. This is the controller that talks to uh, the BMC, and then it can communicate to other RMCs in the other uh, uh, server um, chassis. Um, as, as we were talking about the, uh, the, you know, the, all these uh, uh, standards on, on the uh, you know, the interfaces between the SOC and the, and the BMC. Interestingly, open source project, uh, I mean, the uh, open compute project also has this effort on what's called the run BMC. And it goes into the details of defining the, uh, you know, the, the uh, um, 
you know, the hardware connections between the motherboard and the BMC module. Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, we are going to take a serious look at this uh, when we are talking about the standard definitions uh, for these interfaces as well. And you know, this shows how the, uh, the motherboard and the BMC controllers are connected through the hardware. All these interfaces in between PCIe, USB, I2C, you know, whatever you, you have, uh, they are defining this uh, uh, sodium connections. It's very interesting. They're using a, a kind of a dim uh, socket to support that. And there are a few of uh, the benefits of the RAM BMC that I'm not going to uh, get into too details, uh, but basically it supports the flexibility of having the uh, motherboard development and the BMC development kind of separate. And then you can interchange. You know, maybe you're not satisfied with this uh, BMC module. You can use some other vendor's BMC. That's very nice, actually, also that you know, for us to collaborate, when we do the open BMC this, uh, you know, development, it's also very important to have a way to, you know, to work on these BMC code. Right? Today, a lot of these boards are having proprietary BMCs with, with uh, the motherboard. And, you know, for someone else to, to step in and do development is very difficult. So the call to action here is we want to, you know, everybody to hopefully participate in the Server Advisory Committee to help define the SBMG spec, and then participate in OpenBMC to enable the reference implementation and open source delivery. And then, like I mentioned, also the Open Compute project is uh, having a few interesting projects that we should monitor and participate as well. Uh, ARM is actively working to become a, uh, a member of the TSC for the OpenBMC. Uh, right now, uh, I think the, the players are Intel and IBM on the hardware side, and uh, a number of uh, uh, cloud vendors like Microsoft, uh, Google, and Facebook on the cloud side. Uh, ARM wants to have a voice there, so we have made a formal request to join. Um, uh, I hope to hear some feedback soon. And that is the presentation for me. Uh, thanks for coming. If you have questions, I don't know if we still have time. Looks like we ran out, but uh, I will be here for a while. <laughs>